So a few weeks back I went to my local Ikea looking for living room inspiration and I fell in love with this rectangular coffee table but not quite the £110 price tag and I thought if I'm going to be paying that kind of money why not just get the pocket hole jig that I've always wanted and then still make it for less and that's exactly what I did. So if you want to see how I made this pine farmhouse style coffee table with shelving at the bottom then keep on watching. So the first thing I'm cutting is the legs for my coffee table but I'll leave a blog post below with free plans and a free cutting list to follow. But with it being an off cut I could only have my legs a certain height because this is what I had left over. And because the blade on a saw is a certain thickness it meant I lost a couple of mils in the cut so I had to clamp all of my pieces together and sand to the exact height. So then I took the legs to the living room to gauge an idea of the height and the length that I wanted. Then for all my horizontal battens, I chose a 34mm thick wood for this because I wanted to use my new pocket hole jig and mine you can only work with a 16 to 38mm thickness. And once I've done all of my cuts, it was time to set up my pocket hole jig. With any new tool, I always dread just in case it frustrates me and I can't work it out. But if this is all new to you too, then I'm going to show you how I set it up. So it comes with a face clamp with a twisty handle. Personally, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to try and save up for the automatic ones and for the ones that clamp in the actual pocket hole. It also came with a bag of screws, perfect for this job, and one stepped drill bit and two drill bits, which I found the shorter one useful for tighter corners. And before I even used it, I mounted it to a scrap piece of MDF. And then I'd clamp that bit to the saw horses. Then because I'm working with a 34 millimeter piece, I needed to unscrew the pocket hole mechanism to make it much smaller. And I also found that when I put my wood in and I tried to clamp it, I could still move it. So I needed to unscrew the plate. It comes with a Torx Allen key. And then I moved it to the back so I could push the handle fully down to lock into place. Then to twist the bolt with a spanner, it loosened it for me so I could twist it myself to tighten it on each piece. Next, I needed to set up the drill bit itself. It was recommended to put a three millimeter shim at the bottom or I've seen in a trend video they use a two pence coin. Lay it flat down in front of the pocket hole mechanism, then place the drill bit inside so that shim stops it from going further. Then you slot the collar on and tighten it again. So that then stops the drill bit from drilling any further. So once I've got rid of the shim, I tested it out on an off cut. So I was impressed with my first one, but because it's a coffee table, I wanted to try it with two. I was pre-warned about possible splitting while screwing it together, but I had no issues at all. And once I got the rhythm of it, I pocket holed all of the ends of my 34mm battens. Now the one I bought was £53 on Amazon, and I begrudgingly paid that because pocket hole jigs are really expensive, and it made a really quick job of joining wood together that I wish I'd bought this so much sooner. Then for the top pieces of my battens that I'd be joining to the coffee table top, I needed to put a few pocket hole jigs there so I could screw from underneath. And I read it's best to start them two inches from either side and then every six inches. So when I started building my frame, I glued each join first and then screwed it together through the pocket holes. But because my woods were different thicknesses, I clamped the leg and then another piece at the top just so I could trap my battens so it wouldn't twist or move anywhere while I was joining them. But for the bottom, I didn't want the batten to be sat on the floor. So I measured 30 mil from the base and that was my batten's starting point. And because it's about a meter long, I just used my sash clamps. I also used my speed square to make sure it was all square as I was going along. And once my two sides were done, I propped them up on my saw horses again, used my sash clamps, to continue the same pocket hole screw process. So it was around this time when I took it to my living room and realised, ah, I've got the pocket holes the wrong way around. So I just put my jig underneath and drilled the holes the right way. No one will ever know by the time the top's mounted on. So as for the pine top, I'm using the last of the very old pine shelves that we bought for our very first kitchen in this house and they were very grotty with food stains and all sorts. But I thought I may as well cut them down to size 
join them together and bring them back to life. So after cutting with my circular saw again, I lined the two strips up together that I'd cut and made a few pencil marks for biscuit joins. Yes, I love my biscuit jointer. So I was cutting size 20 slots for size 20 biscuits. And I'd run out of type bond two at this point, so I had to get the Gorilla Glue out, fill the biscuit slots all along the edge as well, pop the biscuits in and clamp them together. But with the clamp pressure, that center line was starting to move. So then I remembered Dave Williams had recommended sprinkling salt along the glue so it didn't move. It didn't cut out the movement completely, but it reduced it a hell of a lot. And although I didn't show it, I placed another large flat piece of wood on top and left it overnight to dry. So the next morning it was relentlessly chucking it down and it had loads of scratches and dints and I didn't want to spend hours using a sander. So I decided to get my carbide scraper out and just scrape off the majority of the damage. And after it had stopped raining, I took it outside and went over it with my orbit sander. And to smarten the edges, I used my 45 degree chamfer router bit, as you've seen in many of my other projects recently. So after putting that to one side, I thought I really needed some extra battens for the bottom shelf, because I was gonna put some slats there, and I knew because they were quite thin, they'd be wobbly. So you'll find all of these pieces in my cutting list that I mentioned, pocket hold them again and glued and screwed them on. Then for the slats, the front and the back one needed to be shorter. So I held it up against it, marked them and cut them down. And to attach them, I want to say a massive thank you to Joe from Average Joe's Joinery's YouTube channel, who sent me this spare nail gun that he had. And it's a Duo 50, and I've got a few projects where I need it at the moment. So feel free to go and say hello. And I really got on with this. I had to press the back end down just to make sure the nail went fully in. And it's got a couple of safety features as well. So yes, got my ear defenders out for this because it's noisy. And then after cutting all my slats, I used a couple of wedges to space them out evenly and just nailed as I went along. I still managed to get my maths wrong on this. So the middle one is slightly out, but I'm not gonna be beating myself up over it. And then I placed everything upside down so I could finally attach the base to the top. But I didn't bother with glue for this. But naturally, I want to do a sit down test. I love it. <sighs> yeah, that didn't sound good. I realized I needed some more battens there as well, particularly because mine's got a join. And once I was happy with the structure of it, I sanded the whole piece, any protrusions, the joins, any slats overhanging. And because I wasn't totally happy with the join being visible on my top, I decided to mix some wood filler up and go over the joins and any knots that had any chunks missing out of them. So I left that for about half an hour before sanding it all off. And my intention was never to bother painting this at all. But a few of you online recommended to paint it white. So I made my own homemade chalk paint. I'll leave a link to the recipe that I always use and went over it with a foam roller. You don't need to prime it or anything. And while that was drying, I then soiled the top with two coats. And returned back to the chalk paint and sealed it with Rust-Oleum's clear furniture wax. So I'm in love again, but if you want to make one yourself, don't forget there's a blog post link below that I've put some free plans and free cutting lists. You don't have to register, it's just there ready for you. And hopefully I can now move on to some boxes for my shelving at the back. Anyway, if you do anything differently, don't forget to let me know below and uh, see you in my next one. Thanks for watching, bye.